All right, I'm just going to uh, show how I'd make the graph uh, for the ALS uh, detergent data that we had for um, our second lab report. And uh, Excel really likes you to put data into rows and columns because it's going to guess that's what you've done. And so I'm just going to start out by saying, well, these are the percentages of the detergent that we used. And I'll just put those in the first column. And then uh, we repeated the experiment uh, three times. So I'll just make up uh, data for the absorbances and I'll say for the 0.1% um, detergent, we got that for our absorbances. And I'll put those all in the first row. And then for 0.5%, I'll say that we got um, data that looks something like that. And then for our 1% um, detergent concentration, when we repeat it three times, I'll say we got data that looks something like uh, that. And the next thing we want to do is we want to graph uh, the average. And um, so, like, because our final graph is going to look, just to show you, our final graph. Ooh, I guess I can't do that. Somehow. Well, um, our final graph is going to have uh, three data points like that for the three different concentrations of detergent we use. And uh, then um, in this graph we can connect the dots because we imagine that if we used concentrations in between these values we'd get those numbers that fall on the dots. Then the last thing is that the lab manual asks us to add these error bars and so we'll get to that. So our final graph is going to look something like that with absorbance on the uh, y-axis and uh, percent of detergent on the x-axis. So that's what we're heading for. So the first thing we want to do with our data is we want to take the average uh, of our data. Uh, and to do that, I want to um, use uh, find this button or, or this feature on the pull-down screen called uh, that I call f of x, or the formula builder. And we can use that to take the average and uh, so when we double click on that, it's going to put the average in and see how it's guessed that we want to use the whole line, but we don't want to use the whole line. And so it's showing down here that we're going to use uh, values from the uh, in row A or in row one from column A through D. And we don't want to use all four of those. So we can re-highlight this like that and it shifts it. And uh, then if we just click in here and ask it to take that average, then that's the average we want. And we can do the same thing for our other rows. Um, we can take, work on taking the average of those. And and uh, in this case, we want to use these values. And uh, so, we do that, and then uh, the next time we want to use these values, and uh, let's see, we don't want to use B, we want to use, oh yeah, three. Um, so we got set with those values. So those are our um, averages, and those are going to be the dots on our final graph. Uh, we also want to calculate the standard deviation, and so uh, to do that, I'm just going to add a column here. And uh, so I'm going to insert another column. And because now we're going to calculate the standard deviation of each of these values. So I can go to here, calculate the standard deviation. Again, highlight what I want it to calculate. And it'll calculate the standard deviation. I can go and do that again here and calculate the standard deviation for these. And then go here and calculate the standard deviation for this. And we'll use those values later. Uh, and so now we're set. We've got averages in one column. We've got standard deviations in another column. And uh, um, we want to use, um, basically use the column F for the y-axis and column A for the x-axis. And um, um, I'm just going to get uh, started. I'll just grab some data like this and ask the Excel to make a graph and uh, graphs are called charts in Excel and um, there are different uh, variety of different kinds um, 
And also these charts are in a variety of different places, so that's where it is in my version of Excel. We want to make a scatter plot, and uh, so Excel is going to guess what we want to use for a scatter plot, and it's going to make the wrong guess. And uh, so now I'm going to teach it how to make the how to correct that. So I first make a, get a graph going, and then I'm going to show Excel um, what I want to use for the data. So it's done a good job on the y-axis. It's using the average, the average uh, absorbance, but on the x-axis, this is wrong. It just is put in uh, a series of numbers, and instead, I want to use that data. And so the way I do that is I can uh, go to a um, pull-down menu or and find this source data window. And that window is going to let me adjust uh, what it, uh, Excel uses for the X and Y axes. And so uh, I can just put this here like this. And for the X values, I can go over to the data and I can highlight that and get Excel to use that for the um, um, X data. If it was the wrong Y data, I could just erase this and go to the uh, spreadsheet and tell it which ones to label. This uh, box here, series, is how many different sets of numbers uh, or data sets you have. So we have sort of one set of number. In graphs where we make that have multiple lines, there would be multiple series. So in other graphs, like another time we did pH over time, and uh, we did temperature over time, and we did different pHs and different temperatures, and you'd have like four different series for the four different pHs. And you can highlight each series and tell it which data to use. So we're all set with the basic graph. Then uh, it's true I made a scatter plot. I should have made a line graph because we'd like the line to be connected. And I don't know how to get that added unless I went back and started over with a, well, maybe I can just pick a different line. Uh, oops, uh, I don't think I wanted to do that. Um, I guess it's interesting. It looks like my data falls on almost a straight line, the data I made up. So that's what made me confused. Uh, when I made a line graph, it looked like just as somehow converted into a straight line. Oh, that looks good. There we go. So <coughs> we're set with our basic kind of graph. Then the last thing we want to do is we want to add some error bars. And so I can highlight the data set by highlighting one of the uh, the points on the data set and then I can go to um, uh, incidentally if I want I did a scatter plot and I wanted to add a trend line that's where it would be for me I think I go to insert or go to data series and this is where it's going to allow me to add some error bars and um, so I do that here I want to make error bars that look like this, and uh, it first guesses what I want to use for the values, but I want to teach it, so I'm going to use a custom and going to specify the values. And uh, to do that, what I do is I erase the, um, the, what it guessed I want to use, and I show it. And remember, we already calculated standard deviations there here, so I highlight those datas. And that's what I want to use for the positive error bars, and I want to use the same data, uh, well, for the, for the up and down error bars, I want to use the same data set. And so I think I'm all set. Yeah. And uh, you can see how, um, oh, and um, now it looks just like the graph in the book. You can see how the error bars are in different values because it's uh, we've had a small standard deviation for the first uh, low concentration and uh, then some bigger uh, error, um, standard deviations for the higher concentrations. And so uh, by having organized the original data into rows and columns, Excel uh, knew that when we selected this standard deviation for our error bars, it should go with this low concentration of the detergent and so forth. And uh, so that's it. Um, we could improve this graph. We could add um, 
uh, and should add a label of units for the x-axis and y-axis. But as far as I'm concerned, if we can get the basics down, we could print that out and write in, you know, um, uh, any of the other information you want to and hand it in. Cool.